Thomas' family also comes up to support his sermon. Now, mind you, Robert has not told his family about any of what has transpired between him and us and the Lord. <laughs> and so when his family sees me again, they're all excited, right? And they're like trying to get me into their family picture. And I'm looking like I'm not about to be in no family picture. This right. man, this what? man doesn't even um want to talk to me about something that the Lord said. What do you mean talking about she, get in the family picture? Now she's snoozing and smoozing around my family. I'm like, <laughs> can't you get away from me? Want to get? I mean, that was such a pressure. I mean, my family never. It was me. such a great moment. Yeah. And his mother actually was fussing with me, trying to get me into this family picture. And I was trying to, like, say, lady, lady, <laughs> your, your, your son and I are not together. Your son and I have nothing to do with each other in that realm. So she finally drags me into the frame of the picture. So if you ever see this picture at his initial sermon, you will see him all the way at the top. You'll see this huge crowd of people, what? and then and then you'll see me, this little tiny person, all the way on the end, down at the bottom on the floor. Because I was so resistant to being in a moment that I felt like, yeah, being in a moment that I felt like was just for him and for his family, you know? And I didn't want to intrude on that um, with his parents thinking that there was something, you know, going on with us. Um, that wasn't there. But anyway, so after that initial sermon, it was and it, it was a great one because the bishop was there, mm -hmm. other preachers were there. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the thing that was so <laughs> made, I mean, I'm not get off on the subject, but it was such a powerful thing. People preach, but the bishop, after I did my initial sermon, he got stirred and he started preaching fire because of the fire he saw coming out of me, and it was just a fiery environment, and that, I never see him rise up like that. So I was like, he really received that word, and there was literally, God came in that room. I've never seen that happen before. You know, I'm used to being Episcopalian way back, you know, stuff like that. I know people should jump and shout, but I never thought that God would share a fiery word with me, and it would stir the entire people of black and white. It was a multicultural service, and this bishop was so, he passed away, and he was so stirred up, and it was amazing. So I thank God for all that. Anyway. So... After his sermon, he finally decides, after two weeks, that he wants to have a conversation. And he comes over to me after his sermon. And, uh, <clears throat> well, hello there. <laughs> um, I think we, I think we need to talk about, uh, you know. Her, her what has transpired? Her. <laughs> yeah, we need to talk because the Lord has been kicking your butt, and you tired of the Lord kicking your butt, and that's just wonderful. That wasn't exactly the characterization <laughs> that I was thinking about, but since you put it like that, yeah, my, my high was my high was raw <laughs> because the Lord was just whooping me up, sending white people to tell me off, sending preachers from different parts of the country. You know what I'm saying? Had people call on my house and stuff. I'm like, where is all this stuff coming from? And I tell you, it was funny. When God say it's for you, you can't even stop it for you, okay? Because he, he got a whole heavenly storehouse load coming your way, and he just going to flatten you with the blessing. So the flesh had to get out the way. In this case, it was a prideful thing. I didn't recognize it, but it was a prideful thing. You know, women in these men's conferences all around the country about being single, safe, and satisfied, and all this stuff about just focus on being you, being you, you know. Um, I actually question those motives because mm -hmm. I really don't believe they're from the Father, okay? Based on I was exactly in the same mindset, and God had to break it out of me, okay? Guilty. Come on. Guilty. Guilty. Uh, yeah, go Guilty. Ahead. Mm. Guilty. Pride. 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 Foolish pride. So, September, October, we quietly acknowledge that, okay, God is doing something between oh, us. Yes. God is doing something. We haven't gone beyond that. We're still not dating. You know, we're going to church. 
We're, you know, visiting still visiting people in, in small group. And at this point, we're acknowledging that God is doing something. God is doing something. Between us, and we're not going to fight it. But let me tell you we something. We stop fighting it. That we point. stop fighting it. And when we <laughs> stop fighting it, guess what wind up happening? And that two weeks after my initial sermon, and then my Shante decided to help some other people out, young ladies in ministry, next thing you know, they make a rumor, tell the bishop and all the church mothers that Shante and I... After. That was after. Yeah, it was after, after the sermon, like two weeks after the sermon, that Shante and I were having sex on top of the glass table at her house. That's what they went and told the bishop. It was after we got engaged. No, no, no. That was in 97. It was, no, we didn't get engaged yet. Hmm. That was when the Lord said that we were one. Oh, yeah. That's and right. what happened was the late, these two ladies who we said, who Shanti decided to open up her house to help, went and told all the church mothers. Yes. And the bishop that Robert Charles, a new initial sermon, this new preacher, mm-hmm. and this girl, Shante was supposed to have her initial sermon right after mine. Like, a, you know, in October. You know, me was September, and the next time they did was October. And what happened was the bishop, the mother said that she can't do her sermon, you know what I'm saying, because they're going to make sure she's not pregnant because there's rumor of these two women. And I tell you, now that I recognize was the devil. I was so angry. I was so angry. I got a phone call from her about how she can't preach and it was like Armageddon, like the world <laughs> had ended. The scream and the roar and the agony and the anguish. So even from the very onset of us accepting the will of God, the enemy came in with the biggest lie and the biggest means to try to destroy not just our own relationship, our reputation, and the ministry. Yeah. So, so I didn't. I did not know. Yeah, a fast attack. And so when people ask me about how do we know a relationship is God-ordained, part of it is the attacks that come against it mm-hmm. before you even get off the ground. And so even to this day, like, I didn't, we didn't realize how huge this accusation was. Like, it wasn't until, like, 10, 12 years later after we were married that people would tell us, oh, yeah, we heard about you. We heard about your scandal. We heard about the accusation. <laughs> scandal, um, what scandal? Yeah, we heard about the accusation that, you know, you and this this new minister were um, sleeping around. On, on top of glass table. So, you know, we didn't, yeah, we didn't know until years later that people were actually looking at our lives, looking at our testimony, looking at how we handled um, the false accusation and all of this other stuff until later. So sometimes you don't even realize um, some of the things that you're going through are really to for God to show himself and to prove himself to other people through looking at your life story. And long story short, these women had to have, we had to have police intervention to get her out of Shante's place because they were stealing and eating all her stuff. And next day, we had to get them out, and they had to get out of the city because they did other ministers the same way. Yeah. And they were spooky. They spoke in tongues. You know, they were all... They spoke in tongues. They prayed all day, and they did not have jobs. And you, so... You tell them, how are you doing? They're like, da, 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 da. I'm like, what is that? You know, and it but was they were, But they were adamant that Robert was not the one that... You know, I needed to separate from Robert, and I didn't know what I was talking about. So, um, so that's what happened with that. Mm-hmm. So let me tell you, y'all. You know, when Rumorville comes around, when God shows you something, just understand. You know, go. You, you're turning into gold. Your gold is being tested. God wants you to sparkle. But yeah, I mean, religion is very interesting because. He had already done his initial sermon, and I was scheduled to do mine. But because of that accusation, I was brought in, you know, and they basically said, you know, Robert didn't really have any repercussions. It was them telling me, you know, the the missionary board telling me that we're going to have to postpone your initial sermon nine months over an accusation because we just want to make sure that you're not pregnant because the last person who um, 
who said that nothing happened, they turned up with a baby. So my thing was like, really? So now you are punishing me for what someone else did in their own life with their own decisions? Okay. So yeah, by the time those nine months passed, I had a whole new sermon for the church. <laughs> and it was a good one too. But that, was a, that was a painful time because I had to literally... Everything, all the fire and all the power of ministry that was in this young lady, we had to really preserve and protect. I was like a police officer in the spirit. We had to protect and serve. I had to protect and serve. I had to protect her integrity, and I had to serve her. I had to, you know, speak the word of truth to the accusations and to the accusers. And you'd be surprised of who are instruments of the accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. You would be amazed. Yeah. It was hurtful. So I still continued doing what I was called to do. You know, I didn't I didn't stop doing anything in ministry. It was just I had to be on this nine month probation before I could give an initial sermon. So I kept doing, you know, campus ministry, preaching, going to Bible study, continuing to be faithful before the Lord, because why? I didn't have anything that I needed to prove. I didn't have anything that I needed to refute because I was living the life that I preached about. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so after that, we had a couple of months passed, and October 31st. Oh, man, that's big. That's big. We all got together. It was another fellowship, you know, because like we said, we had been doing like prayer and, and intercession meetings. It's kind of like going from dorm to dorm or apartment to apartment having these prayer meetings and fellowships with collegiates so we watched we all got together and we watched no more sheets oh yeah at the time when it was actually valid yeah and after that time there was a time of deliverance which we won't go into because well, yeah, it's yeah, long yeah that's, that's long it's a whole that's a whole nother scope about how i saw god deliver people Demons manifesting and watching the fullness, I mean, literally like Catherine Kuhlman type of healing and deliverance overnight, over the whole night at my townhouse, okay? Like 13 people there, and it was amazing. I saw the fullness of God in this woman, which let me know that she was an authentic instrument and vessel of God in the earth. So, um, long story short in that, which was amazing to me, was that I went upstairs and got back down because they wouldn't leave. Her and her friend wouldn't leave. They, she was so, virtu so much virtue went out of her for all that deliverance. So I go down there, and they're still there. I'm like, why did y'all leave? Okay, so it turns out that her friend stayed with her because she was in any position to leave. I tried to get her up. She couldn't move. I mean, she was literally a log or spaghetti, whatever. And what happened was, so in a sense, uh, since he couldn't move, I've got one of my preaching videos of my initial sermon. No, when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was in Japan. I had her watch that, and that happened after the No More Sheets thing early that night or that morning. She watches my baptism in the Holy Spirit. Next thing you know, it, I don't know what happened to my townhouse, but it felt like it translated itself up into the heavens.